Hello, my amazing artist. During our last video, we started to read Frida Kahlo and her Animalitos, written by Monica Brown and illustrated by John Para. And we learned a little bit about Frida and her first pet, a parrot named Bonito. I hope you guys enjoyed drawing Bonito as much as I did. Today, we're gonna to be introduced to another pet and we're gonna learn a little bit more about Frida and her childhood. You ready? Frida had a pet fawn named Granizo. Like her fawn, Frida had watchful, beautiful eyes. When Frida closed her eyes, she remembered her life as a little girl. Frida was always with her father, a photographer who taught her to look at the world through curious eyes. Frida and her father would walk to the park to collect bugs to look at under a microscope. Frida's father also taught her how to paint finishing touches on his photographs. Frida loved the small brushes and the beautiful colors. So again, all you need today is a paper, a pencil, and an eraser. We're gonna start with some basic shapes so we know where our fawn goes. Let's start with the fawn's head. Now, obviously his head's not a circle, but we're going to start with a circular shape. Your circle does not need to be perfect, but you do need to be drawing lightly because you will be doing erasing. Now let's give our fawn a neck that's just going to be two lines going down towards where our fawn's body's gonna go. For the body, we're going to draw a larger more oval shape. So this should be much bigger than your fawn's head. And again, it does not need to be perfect at all. Let's take a look at where his legs are. So there's one, two, three, four legs. We're just going to draw parallel lines to mark off where those legs will go. And again, these don't have to be perfect. You're just kind of getting an idea of where his legs will go. Great, so we've got our basic shapes. Let's get down to business. So we're gonna start towards the top of our fawn's head. Let's take a look at the shape of its ears. Um, they're sort of pointy at the top. We're going to find a spot for our left ear to go, and we're gonna draw a line that goes upwards and sort of diagonal and then we're going to come to a point and go out. When you come to a stop, from that point, you're going to draw a line going down, 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 and then back over towards its head. Great, so we've got one ear, and on the inside, we're just going to make um, sort of a curved shape that's going to be the inside of our fawn's ear. Let's change the top of his head just a little bit. We're gonna have a line that goes up just a little and then a flat line that goes across because the top of his head is sort of flat looking. And then we can erase the top of the circle that we had originally made. His other ear, we're gonna draw a line going up and then we're gonna curve it a little bit towards the top of our paper. Then we're going to bring a line down and then turn your pencil just a little bit and bring it back to the top of his head. Amazing. All right, let's take a look at the shape of our fawn's head. It's obviously not supposed to be a circle. We see that from that top ear, the shape sort of curves out and straight down. And then we've got a snout coming out. So from the ear that we just drew, we're gonna have a line that goes out and then curves down, just like the one in the book. And you can erase all those extra marks that you don't need anymore. Then from the line we just made, we're gonna curve outwards and make a snout. So very carefully, just curve out, out, out and we want that to be a smooth curve. And then from the line we just made, we need to have a line that curves down and then it's going to go straight across 
to connect to its neck. So we curve down and then we're going to go straight across and connect to his neck. And then erase the extra line you don't need anymore. Let's look at its nose. The fawn has a triangle shaped nose at the very end of its snout. So just draw a straight line across from the edge of its snout and then turn that into a triangle. So there's one line, two lines, and then bring it back. There you go, you've got a fawn's nose. I'm gonna color mine in real quick just shade it with my pencil, but you could color it later on if you want to. For its mouth, you can give it any sort of expression that you want to. Of course, you can be creative. You can make it more realistic or more cartoonish if you want. I'm just going to have a curved line and then another curved line. Ta-da! Let's take a look at the shape of his eyes. So they're in a circular shape. And the location of them is right between the fawn's ears. So go right between the ears, come down, 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 below the ears, and let's create that circular shape. I'm going to draw a line across the top of that circle, and that's going to be the fawn's eyelid, where its eyelashes go. You could add eyelashes if you want to, or you can just leave it just like that. Then we're going to have a little curved line at the bottom of the circle and we're going to erase in between that bottom curved line and the eyelid. Now all that's left is to add a circle in between the eyelid and the curved line at the bottom. So we're going to draw a circular shape and I'm going to give my fawn a little highlight inside the eye, just like I always do, but you can be creative with your fawn's eye if you want to. And I'm shading that in just like so. Amazing. Now his other eye you can't see as well. It's sort of on the other side of his face. So I'm going to make sure it's even with my other eye and I'm just going to make a curved line that goes in um, and then a just a little eyelash line that goes outward to show where his eyelid would be and then just like our parrot I'm drawing a circular shape under his eye to give him a little cheek to finish his head we're going to do some erasing of that circle we made at the beginning all you need is a little line where his chin is and now you're finished with its head. Now for the fawn's neck. Now from the bottom of your fawn's ear, there's a straight line going down. So we're drawing a straight line going down. And then there's a point where it starts going diagonal towards the body. So you've got a straight line and then a diagonal line and you can erase all the extra. His body has this little curve right by its neck and then it's sort of flat all the way to his tail. So we're going to, from his neck, do a little hump right there. And then from the bottom of our hump, we're gonna come out towards its tail. I wanna go back and make that curve just a little bit more defined. So there we go, that's better. And then you can erase that first line that you made on the top of the body's oval. And I can also see that his neck sort of goes down past where his body starts. Now when we look at the front leg, that leg is really straight at the top, but then there's these curves at the bottom of his leg. So we're gonna draw two straight lines, and then when we, when we get about halfway down, we're going to make them curve. So here's one straight line and then come over a little bit and we've got another straight line going down. Those look good for the top half of our leg and then for the bottom half again we're going to make our lines a little bit more curved. 
and we'll finish off that leg with a little rectangular shape at the bottom. So I can see that the bottom part of my body isn't covering the whole front leg. So I'm just gonna do some erasing there. And when I go and look at the other front leg, this leg is much straighter. So this one's gonna be a lot easier to draw. And I can also see that it ends higher up than my other front leg. So we just have a straight line that's going to end shorter than my other leg that I just drew. I'm going to connect those two lines and again make that rectangular shape at the bottom and just do a little bit of erasing, cleaning up and add the front part of the lower body. Now Let's look at this back leg. It starts close to the top of the body and it's a very curved line. We're going to keep curving that line, but let me see how far I should curve it first. We want it to be about even with the top of our body. So I think that looks good. And then from that point where we stopped, we've got a straight line for the bottom half of his leg and it's going to end at the same point as our very first leg that we drew. Let's connect those two lines we just made, have that little rectangle at the bottom, and we can see that this leg comes to a point in the back, and then there's a diagonal line going back towards the body, and then we're going to curve it around. Erase all that extra stuff. Erase, erase, erase. You don't need all those extra marks. All right, so for this back leg, we're going to have a straight line that's parallel with the leg that's right next to it at the top. And then at the bottom, it's more curved. So we'll have a straight, straight, straight line. And then we're going to curve it. Mm, I think I made mine a little bit too straight. I'm going to curve it out just like that, much better. And then we're going to start at that point um, and just have a line that goes diagonal, a straight diagonal line just like that. And we'll connect it um, and we will have a little rectangle at the bottom again. Yay, we've got all four legs. All we've got left is the very back of our fawn and we should be finished after that. So let's take a look at this tail. It's curved around the body and then it curves out the other way at the very bottom. And then we've got this curve right here too. So we're gonna be drawing some curved lines. I know you guys can do it. Here we go, a curve and then We've got a little curve going the other way and we connect it just like that. Let's add some texture to the tail, just some little lines. Ta-da! All right, we're all finished. I'm so proud of you. You can stop the video now and add details if you want. You could add a background or color your font, whatever you want to do. Please have your parents take a picture of your art and send it to me. I would love to see it. So at this point in the video, you can either stop or you can follow along with me as I add extra details to my font. So first, I'm going to add these spots that are all over his back. The rest of my details are going to be me adding value to my fawn, which means I'm going to be shading. I can see that this back ear has some shading on it, so I'm going to use my pencil to color in that back ear, and I want to be coloring in the same direction to make it nice and smooth. I'm also going to add shading to the top of his head. So value just sort of makes it a little bit more realistic. It I can see it there's a little depth. bit of shading on each side of that front ear. I'm going to add some shading 
inside that front ear too. I can see there's a little bit of shading on my Fawn's eyelid, so I'm going to color in the eyelid just a little bit. And then underneath his neck, there's a whole bunch of shadows. So I can see it's almost like a triangular shape. So I'm gonna draw that triangle really lightly first and then color it in really carefully, making sure I'm coloring in the same direction the whole time so that it looks smooth and not sloppy. I'm also going to add shadows below its chin and then along that line that's the side of its neck. Moving on, I see a little bit of shadow right here. There's a little bit of shadow along the curve of this back leg. So again, try to color in that same direction, making it really smooth. There's some shadow in between the back of my fawn and the tail. So I'm gonna shade that in. There's a little bit of shadow right in the middle of that back leg in the shape of an oval. And then right at the very top of the tail, there's a little bit of shadow there too. Now I see some shadows in the very back of my front leg. And I see a lot of shadows on the leg right next to it because it's on the other side so it's going to be much darker. So we're going to start by coloring in dark and as we get further down the leg we're going to press down a little bit lighter. So it should be dark at the top and light at the bottom. You could even rub in your shadows with your fingers. You'll get a little messy, but it looks more blended and a little bit more natural. And we're going to add some shadow to that very back leg. I think that's where the most shadows are. So again, we want to color in the same direction and you can smooth it out with your finger or you could use um, a paper towel or handkerchief or something. So there you go. I think I'm done shading. I'm just going to add a couple things and make it my own. I can't wait to see what you guys end up coming up with for your fawn. Again, please have your parents take a picture of it and email it to me so I can see. I love seeing your artworks. I miss seeing them. And we're finished. Great job, artists. See you next time. Say bye. Peter says bye.